Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm finding it a little bit hard to get started today. <laughs> I actually really can't be bothered, but I do really need to get on with the, uh, the oil change on the Land Rover. I've got all the oil over there, got the filter as well, and I've had it for weeks actually. And I went out for a, a really good drive yesterday uh, with a friend of mine with a Series 2A. Um, I'll put a bit of uh, a footage of, of that up in a bit. Um, but we went quite a long, quite a long drive into the countryside uh, out near Dresden, or I should say just outside of Dresden, and uh, found some green lanes and, and it was brilliant fun. My, my, my daughter uh, drove the Land Rover for the first time and actually drove for the first time and she, she picked it up. Uh, she must be a natural at driving because she picked it up in, in probably, I don't know, five minutes. Um, it's amazing what you can do when, when you haven't got much time to, to do it. So, so she went for a drive yesterday. And, uh, but anyway, uh, the point of the story is, is that, um, yeah, the more I drive the car, the more I definitely need to change the oil because I haven't done it since I put the new oils in. And you'll know from the videos that was probably, I didn't even know when it was, 2016, 2017. So really not good for, 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 for the... Um, for the car. I haven't been doing hardly any mileage in it, but it's obviously the moisture that gets into the oil and so on. So um, that is the plan for today. So what I have is engine oil, EP90 uh, gear oil, which is obviously for the gearbox, uh, the transfer case, the overdrive and the um, axles. So there's actually quite a lot of work and I've got a feeling I also need to re reset the tappets as well. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. So uh, the car is cold at the moment, so I'm going to go out for a quick drive, get it nice and warm, and then start on the oil. Okay, so just got back from a, I don't know, 10, 10 15 minute drive. Use the overdrive as well. Um, everything's pretty warm. The only thing I noticed is, of course, because I had the freewheeling hubs on, the front axle oil isn't warm at all because nothing's moved in there whatsoever. Uh, so maybe I just won't do that today. I'm going to do the engine oil first and then see how I get on. But uh, yeah, so um, what I have in the way of engine oil is, oh, that's the gear oil. Uh, so I've got EP90, uh, no, EP80-90 GL4, uh, coma or comma uh, for, the, um, for the gearbox and the axles. And I've got 20W50 mineral oil for the engine. Um, also got my, it's actually a Brit part filter, but that's what I ended up being able to get on the uh, online over here. But I've got the uh, the oil filter as well. So yeah, so I'm going to get started. I'm just going to leave that there draining out for a little while. Um, I've just got to undo the oil filter housing. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I've got the oil filter out. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a little, it's a, it's a messy job. This is actually the first time I've ever done an oil change on this car. And the front drive shaft, there's probably a better way of doing it, but the front prop shaft gets in the way and it just, uh, it catches all of the oil, all the, all the oil draining out from the um, filter housing just goes all over the prop shaft. And uh, I had a little bit of a spillage there, but um, that's the way it is. And that's still dripping out there. Um, but yeah, just looking at the oil filter, um, I haven't opened it up or anything, but it all looks pretty normal, to be honest. There's no bits in it, which is good. Um, but in a second, I'm just gonna get the oil out and have a look, um, but I think it's all gonna be fine. So I'm just going to clean these things up now, fit the new um, seals, and then put it back together. Okay, so yeah. still dripping a little bit out of the sump plug. Uh, it takes quite a long time actually to drain fully. Um, but otherwise I've cleaned off the boot there with um, brake clean, and also the, uh, the oil filter uh, how, the, yeah, housing uh, flange up the top there. All I've got to do now is I've got to take out this um, oops, this uh, gasket in here and replace it with the new one. Okay, so I've decided to do the gearbox oil as well and then most likely the transfer case and I'll probably end up doing the overdrive as well. 
um, but it's that 3 16 bolt there. Um, undo that and uh, drain the oil. Okay, so I've got the gearbox draining now, and now I'm going to move on to the uh, transfer case. I'm actually going to take the transfer case housing off because I've always had a leak from there around the small uh, studs. So I'm going to put a new seal on there. But what I'm going to use, what I found, found in the past, is obviously a tool for it. But under here, you can see this is like a like a slot. And I've always used the um, the handle, which uh, which I got with my angle grinder. It fits perfectly in there. So I'm just going to sort of clamp it between a, you know, the teeth of an adjustable spanner and open it that way. Okay, so this is quite interesting. So I've taken that panel off the bottom of the transfer box or transfer case, and you can see there's tons of bubbles here. And I'm wondering whether that is moisture in the oil or whether that just happens. What do you think? Maybe one of you guys knows if that's normal or not. I know it's high time to change the oil, but uh, yeah, whether after a drive these bubbles in the uh, in the oil is normal. Okay, so I was just inspecting the the drain cap from or the drain plug, whoops, from the main gearbox, and just in here I was cleaning this out, and I found this, which is a a tooth from. One of the, oops, that's a tooth from one of the cogs, gear cogs, which is quite worrying because all of the worn ones on that, um, on that main shaft were, um, were new. So that's a bit of a shame because that's, that certainly wasn't in there when I put it all back together because obviously I cleaned everything. So that's a new break. And you can see there's the, um, the sort of the, the, the beveled part of the cog, which then goes into the other cog, you know, um, maybe the synchro mesh. But uh, that's, that's rather unfortunate, or, or, or not unfortunate, just disappointing, really. Um, it might well be one of the old cogs, I don't know, uh, but it might also be one of the new ones. So, so what do you think? Do I, how much is that going to affect? The gearbox, I mean, it's important that I've got it out. It was really bedded down right in there in, under the sludge. So there's tons of sludge in there, but you can see there are other bits of metal in there as well. Which, yeah, rather disappointing. Okay, so I'm just tidying up the, the cover for the uh, transfer case. Um, I've tried to clean it up with a bit of gauze, but it doesn't really come up that well, or it's a lot of work anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try it on this wire wheel and, um, and get that cleaned up. And also just to see, putting it on a flat surface just to make sure there are no bends in it because obviously that'll, that'll really um, not help the, uh, you know, the seal. So I was also quite lucky because from the restoration you end up with a whole bunch of spare parts. So in my gasket set, I had a spare gasket for that, um, that cover, which was, I sort of had in the back of my mind that I, that I had one, but, um, but yeah, quite happy to have found it. Okay, so I've just given the edge of that a, a clean up. I think when I restored it, I painted the entire face, you know, so obviously the, the, the mating surface uh, was, was painted, which is not really a good idea because uh, the paint had really flaked, so that uh, it just lets oil pass. So, um, it's an alloy anyway, so, um, oh, missed a bit there, got to get that off. Um, but so, so it's fine to be uh, unpainted. Um, I'm going to leave the other side as it is black, but uh, yeah, that should do it. I'm still going to use some seam sealant. Uh, some people say use it, other people don't, don't like using it at all. But I'm going to use the gasket. Some people just say use the gasket and put some uh, oil on, on the gasket, which, yeah, fair enough. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and um, put some seam sealant on there. Um, and you can see here what I meant with the flat surface. You can see there are some some ripples along here. So I'm gonna. It's all that is is folded folded uh, folded metal. Uh, but I'm gonna try and uh, get those flat as I can uh, using a hammer. 
Okay, so I've tidied up that uh, plate there. I've also taken all the, the nuts off of the, the studs because sometimes when you remove the, the nuts from under here, then the studs come with them. So some of them were rusted on, so I heated those up and, uh, and broke them free. And uh, I think there's two or three of them on here which needed uh, putting back in, so I've tightened them in there. And I've also cleaned the surface. I sort of filed some rough spots and uh, cleaned it up with um, with brake clean afterwards. I also gave them a bit of a clean up with the uh, with the brake clean as well, just to get rid of those bubbles and stuff. But anyway, I am now going to put all that back together. Okay, so I have got the transfer case plate back on. Um, they've tightened up really nicely, and now I'm draining the oil in the ferry overdrive. While I'm letting that drain, it's almost finished. I'm going to start filling the oil in the engine. I think it takes just over six litres. I've got it noted down somewhere, but I'm going to do that now. Okay, so um, I've got a problem with the ferry overdrive, which I've I've sort of known about really. I spotted it when I was checking like a few, yeah, the, the tightness of bolts uh, a few a few weeks ago, I'd say. And I realized that the drain plug for the ferry overdrive was just finger loose. But then I tried to tighten it up, and when I, when I used a, a spanner to tighten it up, it just kept turning in the housing. So uh, it's the, the, the thread is, you know, uh, threaded, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's knackered. So, it's really frustrating because obviously I'm trying to do the oils on the car and without being able to do this because I can't close this now um, there's nothing I can do really um, to uh, to get the thread to hold so the only thing or the best thing to do is is to take it off and I'll have to drill out that um, that thread and put a new thread in uh, which is a real pain, but um, I guess the only thing I can do to do it properly. So that means I won't be able to get very far with um, with uh, with completing the car today because this is going to take a while longer. But anyway, I shall keep you updated. Okay, just started the Land Rover now after doing the transfer case, main gearbox, and the engine oil, and it's it's so noticeably smoother. It just sounds gorgeous. I've got a little bit of choke on on at the moment. So look, uh, it still needs a little bit of choke, but uh, oh, it just sounds so smooth, beautiful. Uh, it's very frustrating about the ferry overdrive, but obviously uh, it's just one of those things and I'll have to deal with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off and, uh, and I'll, I'll re-thread that, um, that hole with, uh, with a bigger, with, you know, for a bigger nut or, or a bigger bolt, obviously. Um, and then that will get that resolved. But uh, yeah, it's never, never always plain sailing, but uh, one step forward at least with the oil. Okay, so put the car away now. Um, I just drove it around the, around the yard here and it was, um, it's so much smoother. It just sounds fantastic. Um, so I can't wait to get that ferry overdrive, overdrive fixed. And also, of course, the new fluids in the axles fill up the uh, overdrive. And then I'm going to pack the, uh, repack the bearings on all four corners with the high temperature grease. So that should, and then I really should have a professional alignment done. And then that is pretty much done. So uh, yeah, look forward to going on some long drives with it. I'll see you next time. So we're doing a first bit of off-roading in the Land Rover. That's my friend's Series 2A in front of us there with 
my daughter and uh, his daughter's in. And we've got a really cool bridleway here, which we've been on for about, I don't know, half an hour or so. And my daughter's just been driving for the first time, which she did really well. But, uh, oops. But yeah, very cool, brilliant fun. God, look at the size of this thing. Oh, hello, mate. Jesus, that's huge. Hello, cows. 